Look at how thick and sticky this is. This is a wine from a different time. This is Commanderie, the oldest wine in the world. Traditional Commanderie is a Cypriot wine made popular in medieval times. Look at this. It looks like honey. In its current form and name, Commanderie goes back to the 12th century AD, when the Crusader Knights Templar made it very popular. In fact, the name Commanderie is derived from the headquarters of the Knights Templar in Limassol, known back then as La Grande Commanderie. It's right here, in Cyprus. It's 70 kilometers from my house. Here are three examples of Commanderie. I love them all, but they are so different. St. John's by Kio and Alassia by Loel are very true to the medieval ancestor of this wine. Now, look at this. The future of Commanderie. This tastes like a sophisticated brandy. What's going on here? This Amber Jewel by Chaka's Winery is a very modern take on Commanderie. Is it true to tradition? It wouldn't bear the name Commanderie if it wasn't, but how is it different? I think my friend Orestes Chakas might be able to help me understand this updated Commanderie a little better. Orestes, I think we need to talk. So, what is Comandaria? Which wine can we call Comandaria? What's required? In order to make Comandaria, there are a few uh, laws that you have to comply to. Uh, first of all, to make Comandaria, you can make it from two varieties only, Xinisteri and Mavro. It's 100% of one, 100% of the other, or a combination of the two. Xinisteri is a white, it's the local white variety, yeah. and Mavro is the local red. Yes, the most, exactly. Uh, most well known. Grown. Okay. Uh, it has to be made in one of the 14 villages of Comandaria, which these are Zopigi, Calocorio, Lanya, Yos Mamas, and so on and so on. And it has to be within that area. The grapes, they have to come from that area, and it has to be made, vinified in that area. Then, uh, once you finish the fermentation in the Comandaria region, there is a person coming from the Ministry of Agriculture that takes a sample uh, to Limassol, where they're doing a chemical analysis and there's also a panel of experts that they are doing a tasting blind and they give you the okay for you to transfer the Comandaria into the winery or wherever it is for processing and for aging. For us, what we are doing here, we are one of the, we're the only winery basically uh, producing Comandaria from the very beginning. We have our own vineyard in the Comandaria region in Ayos Mamas, okay. uh, where we pick the grapes, uh, we take care of the vineyard and so on, uh, in collaboration with the vineyard owner. We harvest the grapes, we lay them down in the Comandaria region. Everything has to go there uh, in order to make the Comandaria there ourselves. <music> The grapes need to be dried out in the sun? Yes, and the difference that we do here in this winery is that we have it onto the beds. They are uh, higher up so that they give better aeration ah, to them. Okay. And uh, because, you know, if they're on the ground, then it's uh, not as healthy for the grapes. In so this is end. similar to Amarone, you just stack them up in... Uh... Yes, but in uh, Amarone, they, they control, they are allowed to actually to control the humidity, the air, the everything. Here it has to be sun-dried, so everything is dependent onto the, uh, on the weather. Cold. So how, how do you know when the grapes have been dried enough? Do you measure the sugar? Or? Yes, we do measure the sugar using a density meter. We collect some uh, sample and uh, we check the level of sugar it has. <music> Is the residual sugar a fixed number? We taste it, we check it, and then we decide when to stop the fermentation. But we are aiming this winery 
uh, to reach natural sugar of between 13.5 to 15%. The sugars, they range, but they're usually around 200 grams per liter. What is specified by law is what's the uh, sugar content level when you're going to harvest the kumandaria, what's the sugar content where you're allowed to crush the kumandaria after the sun drying. That's fascinating. So there's a lot of requirements. It's not easy Absolutely, to make yes. kumandaria. Absolutely, yes. Even after when you have the kumandaria ready and you age it by law for two years and more, then you have to uh, call someone from the Ministry of Agriculture again to come here, take a sample, taste it again, do a chemical analysis, then give you the K before you can put the label and what release to the market. Uh, the alcohol and the volatile acidity of the kumandaria. Uh, on average, it's about 15? Yeah, most kumandarias but most kumandarias, be... they're being fortified here. We started the tendency of unfortifying the kumandarias. We do not want to add uh, alcohol spirit to it. How do you get it to look so golden? So, this uh, comes basically from the sun drying of grapes. There is this uh, reaction, chemical reaction that happens. It's called the Maillard reaction. And it's basically a reaction between uh, an amino acid and reducing sugar that causes these browning elements to be formed and uh, have this also caramel effect. Maillard reaction happens everywhere from baking to cooking to so, so All of the fact, aspects of it's, life. It's like the color of, of sultanas, right? Yes. Right, sultanas. Okay. Guys, I had the best time during my visit at Chaka's Winery, but I ended up with so much footage, I have to actually make two videos. This week's video is a Q&A about Kumandaria, and all our questions have been answered. Our first question, is this updated version of Kumandaria true to tradition? It absolutely is. It meets every single requirement, the grapes, are grown in the Commanderia region, harvested and dried in the Commanderia region, and they are vinified in the Commanderia region. Our second question was, how is this wine different? Unlike many traditional Commanderias, the Chakas Commanderia is not fortified. Also, the Chakas Commanderia is single vintage, not a Solera wine. This means that the wine is blended, the barrels are not topped up. It's a single vintage wine. And finally, the drying of the grapes, they're not just put on cloths under the sun. Air circulates because they are put on racks. The grapes dry evenly for the best result. And our final question was, why is this Commanderia, this beautiful amber color, when most commanderias seem to be a dark mahogany? The answer to this is quite simple. Chakas uses only Xenisteri, not Mavro. And Xenisteri being a white grape, it gains this beautiful golden caramel color and very delicate aromatics. Cheers, tasters. So what happened to the rest of the footage? I am currently editing part B of my visit to Chaka's winery. The second video, the vertical tasting of their Commanderia. Six vintages, it captures the evolution of this beautiful wine and I can't wait to share it with you. Tasters. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to share it with a friend. Subscribe and I'll see you on the next video.